Good morning, Norwest, and welcome to Daily Devotions. Uh, we're in the book of uh, Acts, chapter 13, verses 4 through to 12. Um, and uh, I want us to be thinking about what disciples do this morning um, in light of our passage. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for Jesus. We thank you that you desire to transform us more and more like Jesus so that we might be thankful to know who you are and what you are like. And so help us treasure Jesus. Help us see you and your word clearly today um, as we follow you as your disciples. We pray all this for Jesus' sake. Amen. Well, if you've been following our church, uh, you'll know that last Sunday was Mission Sunday. Uh, and so today I want us to be thinking, as I mentioned, uh, about what disciples do. What do disciples do? Uh, so a bit of context as we sort of land for today. Uh, obviously, the church is in uh, Antioch. Lots of stuff's happening in chapter 12 through there. Uh, after all of that, uh, a bunch of God's people sort of meet to pray and fast and worship. And the Holy Spirit calls out to two particular people um, to go on this missionary journey. Uh, Paul's first missionary journey uh, which is not a couple of kilometres, it's hundreds of kilometres. And he uh, proclaims the word of God faithfully. So, uh, that's where we're up to. How about a read? Um, from verses 4 of chapter 13. The two of them sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God to the Jewish synagogues. John was with them as their helper. They travelled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and, f and false prophet named Bar-Jesus, who was an attendant of the proconsul Sergius Paulus. The proconsul, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the sorcerer, for that is what his name means, uh, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked, at, looked straight at Elymas and said, You are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of, kinds, of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways to the Lord? Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You are going to be blind for a time, not even able to see the light of the sun. Immediately, mist and darkness came over him, and he groped about, seeking someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed, for he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. Well, there's lots to unpack if we want to be thinking about what disciples do. But what, we, but what we know is true about a passage like this is that disciples know and show Jesus. They know Jesus as the one who has all authority, who has given them, them a message of salvation, which they treasure in their hearts. And they also know that, that he is with them by his spirit. So disciples know Jesus. But disciples also show Jesus. They long because they know this incredible message that's changed their life from death to life, literally, that they want to show this to others. They want to share this with others so that disciples, so they would make disciples who make disciples who share the love of God with each other. So people will not perish but have life as God has intended. And so as we know this about disciples, we also know as people who experience life walking with Jesus, that this can be pretty tough. And the Christian life was never meant to be easy. <laughs> and so it's tricky being rejected by others as you share and show this incredible life-changing message of Jesus. It's tricky when people reject the message of our Saviour. It's tricky when they flip Jesus from the one who has all authority to someone who is just a part of history, or fabricated for that matter. It's tricky when they reject Jesus' authority, his word, his message, and even you. 
you know, to Corinthians to remind us that to some where the smell or the aroma of life or the, the, the smell of Christ, and to others we are the stench of death. Uh, and, and this is one little tiny example of a disciple who knows Jesus and loves Jesus and how people respond to the law of God in different ways. Um, we've got uh, Paul, uh, Paul uh, sorry, Sergio Paulos here as we read in our passage who believes and who's, who's an inquirer, who's curious and calls soul, i.e. Paul, and, and Barnabas so that he can actually hear what this message is because he seemed like a bit of an inquirer anyway. It, it will be commonly known as, as some leaders of regions would have all kinds of people who with views about God in order to be winsome as leaders and powerful as, as leaders as well. Hence why this sorcerer is there too. But as much as some people may, uh, may treat people as the aroma of life or Christ, they also can be the stench of death, which we see here in Elemis, the sorcerer, who detests and appears to be detesting again and again with trickery and all kinds of, of tact to deceive and distract Paulus to receive Christ. And so as a result, Paul announces judgment and mercy on him. Judgment, in a strange way, the, the same judgment that Saul received, being blind, but mercy in that it was just for a period of time. It's the same coin, judgment and mercy, the same coin that we also see at the cross, this judgment that Christ would take on all of our sin, take the wrath of God to be satisfied so that by his blood, we could be recipients of his grace. And yet mercy at the same time as salvation comes through no other name but Christ. We see this happen to this person. So sometimes as people who know and follow Jesus, uh, we can be the stench or the aroma of life or death. You know, disciples also know uh, that God is sovereign. And they know that as much as we're called to know and show and share the incredible news that Jesus offers to all, they also know that we hold all of this in jars of clay. And so we trust that God's Spirit would convince and convict and call people to treasure Jesus as their life giver, as the one who stood in their place on their behalf on the cross and before God. 1 Corinthians 3 uh, verses 6, if, if I can find that quickly, is also this. It says this, I plant the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according for their work, for where God's fellow workers in his field. You know, God's people who know and love God, who long to bubble up in thanks and share that with others, know that God is sovereign. And it is our job as disciple yeah. aspects to know Jesus and to share, show that with others. And trust that God's sovereign, good, loving, just character who longs for none to perish, that he will act and he will save, just as we read in 1 Corinthians 3. So friends, as we continue to follow Jesus and know this key passage, but also the verse that sort of shapes it all in Acts 12, 24, that the word of God continued to increase and spread, to know that that is still true today. That as we go, as we go with our great God in his power, in his strength, in thanks to what he's done and what we've received, that disciples go and know Jesus and they show Jesus to others, longing that none should perish in line with God, but know that only God is the one who grows the seed, who changes hearts, who makes salvation happen. That is both freeing and just so good. 
that the burden is lifted off us to do everything but to go, to know, and to show. And allow the Lord, and trusting in the Lord's sovereign hand to save. Let me pray. Father, we want to commit our hearts and lives to you. And we ask that you would bear what is true in us as we think about being disciples. So correct our hearts and free us up to be thankful, to be bold, and to be your disciples who make disciples. And we pray all this for Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, thanks for joining us this morning and uh, stay tuned for a bunch more devotions as we uh, long to be God's disciples. Hope you have a great day.